جی جی تو یہ بڑے مشہور اسکالر ہیں رضا شاہ فاضمی ان کی کتاب ہے جس کا ٹائٹل ہے امام علی فرام کنسائز ہسٹری ٹو ٹائم لیس مسٹری سوری ایک چھوٹا سا سیکشن ہے جو کہ رسول اکرم کا میرے خیال بڑا مشہور کال ہے کہ علی کا چہرہ دیکھنا یہ عبادت ہے تو اس سے ریلیٹڈ بیسیکلی ایک چھوٹا سا سیکشن ہے اس بک کے اختتام اینڈ میں ہے بیسیکلی ویسے میں نے یہ بک شیئر بھی کر دی تھی تمور صاحب آپ کے ساتھ تو میں اس بک میں سے اینڈ میں غالب نے اس بک کے اینڈ میں ایک چھوٹا سا سیکشن ہے جس کا ٹائٹل ہے کنٹمپریٹنگ دا فیس آف دا امام اس میں سے کچھ پیراگراف جو ہے وہ میں پڑھنا چاہوں گا تو لیٹ می اسٹارٹ تو جیسے میں نے بتایا کہ اس کا ٹائٹل ہے اس سیکشن کا کنٹمپلیٹنگ دا فیس آف دا امام تو اس کی شروعات جو ہے بیسیکلی وہ ہر طرح کا ایک کال ہے جو انہوں نے اپنا ایک خطبہ خطبۃ البیان اس میں اپنے بارے میں کچھ اقوال تھے ان کے تو اس سے رضا شاہ کازمی شروع کرتے ہیں تو میں اسٹارٹ کرتا ہوں ان ہز فیمس سرمن آف ایویڈنس خطبہ خطبہ البیان The Imam helps us to understand how a vision of his face can be described as an act of worship. Now, this is Imam Ali's words and words. I am the sign of the all-powerful. I am the gnosis of the mysteries. I am the threshold of thresholds. I am the companion of the radiance of the divine majesty. I am the first and the last, the manifest and the hidden. I am the face of God. I am the mirror of God. I am he who is in possession and the, of the secret of God's messenger. This is why Raza Shah Kazmi is a little bit of a paragraph. There are three key points that they highlight. The first point is So the first point is this. Imam Ali describes himself as the face of God. This is the first point. Second important point, he refers to himself as the mirror of God. And the third point, he says that he knows the secret or mystery of the Prophet. So now we will explain these three points. Taking the first two points together, once we understand that Imam Ali is a mirror of God, it is easy to see how he can refer to himself as the face of God. The face that we see in the mirror is not that of the individual, Ali bin Abi Talib, but the face of God. The mirror, indeed, becomes invisible when we are really focusing upon that which is reflected in it. This invisibility of the mirror can be taken as the symbol of the Imam's total self-effacement, his fana filla, extinction in God. All the names and qualities of God can be seen reflected in the mirror of the perfectly effaced saint. Hence, the mirror can say, in an illusion to that which is reflected in it, that it is the first and the last, together with all the divine names and qualities. It is each of these names only as the locus of manifestation whereupon the names and quali- qualities are manifested and not as these names and qualities are in their unique essence, which is eternally transcending all manif- which eternally transcends all manifestation. Hence, it is not surprising that nowhere, not even in the most radical Hulu literature, do we find the Imam saying, I am the essence of God. In the Sufi tradition, the Prophet is described as a mirror reflecting the divine nature. For example, the 16th century Turkish poet Khakani sings to the Prophet, God made you the mirror of the ascents, a looking glass for the unique ascents. Ibn Arabi helps us to appreciate the relationship between the prophetic mirror and our own spiritual quest. Looking at the prophetic reality with the eye of the heart, means contemplating God in the most perfect manner possible. The manifestation of God in the mirror of the Prophet is the most perfect, the most accurate, and the most beautiful. When you perceive him and him with a capital H, 
when you perceive him in the mirror of the prophet, you perceive a perfection that you cannot perceive when contemplating him in your own mirror. Therefore, do not try to contemplate God anywhere but in the mirror of the prophet. If we remember that the prophet described Ali as being like my very soul, we might not be wrong in speculating that when the prophet said that looking at Ali is an act of worship, he was hinting at his own mystery as well as that of the Imam. The implication could well be that looking at himself was, e was an even greater act of worship than looking at Ali. Out of modesty, however, and in the tradition of Arabic Balaga, the veiled reference to his own spiritual reality is made even more mysterious by alluding to the presence of this reality in another person. And that person, what, what kind of a person? The companion, the brother, the friend, the lover, who most faithfully reflects his own reality. The relationship between seeing the prophet and contemplating God is, however, explicitly found in such statements as the following. Who sees me has seen the truth, al-haq. Now, the esoteric interpretation of this saying, which is found both in authoritative Sunni collections as well as in Shia sources, is that one who sees the prophet in a dream has indeed seen his true form. The esoteric interpretation is self-evident and indeed fits the literal wording more exactly. The following couplets in Rumi's Masnavi reinforce this interpretation. They come in the context of a playful dialogue between Rumi and Shams, where the secret of the is being teased out. It is better that the secret of the friend should be disguised. Do you hearken in the contents of the tale? It is better that the lover's secret should be told in the talk of other. The last line could be rendered thus. It is sweeter that the mystery of the lovers be conveyed through speaking about others. It is as if Rumi is saying, let me allude to the mystery of my own sainthood by describing other saints, which is precisely what he does, not only in relation to Sams, but also in relation to Hosam, ad din and others. Rumi proclaims, sweet is the oneness of the friend, friend with the capital F, Sweet is the oneness of the friend with his friends. So, to describe one of the friends of God, that is the saints, is to describe them all. By the same token, it is to allude to the friend, Al-Wali, God himself. For inasmuch as God comes not into sight, these prophets are the vicars or naib of God. Nay, I have said wrongly, for if you suppose that the vicar and he with the capital H who is represented by the vicar are two, it, such a thought is bad, not good. Nay, they are two so long as you are a worshipper of form. They have become one to him who has escaped from form. Now to escape from the worship of form is tantamount to seeing the one in the mirror of all form. Wherever you turn, there is the face of God. It's a Quranic verse. When we look at Ali, we see the Mazhar al-Ajay, as he is called in the famous Nadi Ali formula. The place, the face, the mirror, wherein are reflected marvels. <clears throat> we see the manifestation of the marvelous names and qualities of the face of God. God as al-Zahir, the outwardly apparent. The believer is the mirror of the believer, said the prophet. We could also translate this as, the believer is the mirror of the one, one with the big O. The believer is the mirror of the one who gives security through faith, since Al-Mu'min is one of the names of God. When we look in the mirror of God, the mirror itself is invisible. We see only what is reflected in it, that is the face. The manifestation of God is distinct from the essence of God, even though the manifestation has no reality apart from that of which it is a manifestation. The essence remains eternally invisible, ineffable, transcending all things, including its own manifestation. According to the prophet, God is veiled by 70,000 veils of light and darkness. Were they to be removed, the glory of his face would burn up all that he looked upon. So all we can see of the divine light is what comes through veils, mirrors, symbols, and icons. 
one of the greatest of which is the face of a saint. The divine reality realized in the heart of the saint is reflected by the spiritual light which illumines the face of the saint. Once the saying Munawar lit up in describing the radiance one feels almost tangibly flowing from the face of a saint. When Imam Ali tells us that God can be seen by the heart through Haqqaiq al-Iman, the spiritual realities of faith, the implication is that what he sees is identical to the quintessence of what he is. The theophany constituted by the face of God can only be seen by the theophany constituted by the human heart. My heaven cannot contain me, my earth cannot contain me, but the heart of my believing slave can contain me, according to Ahadi Sekutsi. When Imam Ali sees the theophany, the face of God everywhere, he sees by virtue of the same theophany imminent within his own heart. Thus, what is seen is identical with that which sees. The subject and the object of the vian are one and the same. When Imam Ali sees God, he sees what he truly is in the inmost depths of his being. The inward theophany and the outward theophany are at one. When we look at the life, the teachings, and the holiness of Imam Ali, we see not what we are, but what we can be, a true human being made in the image of God. Contemplating the face of Ali's perfect sanctity reveals something of what is hidden in the depths of our own humanity. Now, I'm going to conclude with the Quranic verse, which is mentioned here at the end of the chapter. We shall show them our signs on the horizon and in their own souls until it becomes clear to them that he is the real. Is it not enough that your Lord is the witness of all things? Thank you. Uh, ये उस किताब का असल क्लाइमैक्स भी है बिल्कुल आखिरी हिस्सा जी 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 बिल्कुल इसमें वैसे तो कुछ पॉइंट्स हैं लेकिन चूंकि मेरे को टाइम के भी कमी है जिसके ऊपर डिटेल में डिस्कशन मेरे को बाद में भी हो सकती है तो इतना क्लियरली उसके बयान किया है हां जी जी जारी बात है वो उसमें वो मेटाफिजिकल ट्रांसपेरेंसी ऑफ फिनोमेना वाला आईडिया भी है फिर जो मिरर ऑफ गॉड वाला आईडिया जिसके बारे में इब्ने अरबी ने ख़ुसूस ال